What's going on, everybody? This is the Blockchain Backer bringing you the latest cryptocurrency news and analysis. Today, we're going to briefly talk about the Bitcoin price chart, but the primary focus is going to be over here on the altcoin market and where we're at right now kind of piggybacking on the things we've talked about in the last two videos in regards to how much time we've spent in here for Bitcoin and the altcoin market, including XRP. And what we'll find really throughout a lot of these things, just based on time of where we're at, we're all kind of residing here in this moment. Whether we're looking at an asset like XRP, if we're looking at Bitcoin, or if we're looking at things like the altcoin market. And the reality is that fact alone is what makes everything so challenging right now. And I'll kind of explain that more in detail. But again, it, it resorts back to those conflicting things we talked about in last week's video on the challenges in the market. So I'll kind of reiterate that, but also bring it from kind of a different perspective too. talking about these and how in past market cycles, even for the altcoin market, we sit right here where expansion actually did begin both in 2020 and 21 and in 2016 and 2017, like from a time perspective, you're there. The challenge, of course, is what you know, I know, your grandma knows, we all know when we're tired of hearing about it, is that there hasn't been any expansion that has happened in the United States stock market to turn into risk on. It has really just been the Magnificent Seven show that has pulled up all the indexes, but the rest of the market has not participated. So we're going to kind of elaborate on that a little bit more here. And we'll talk about things called confluence, which you guys should be familiar with. But if you're not, it's where you're looking for multiple things to kind of line up in one way that give you a little bit more conviction in the bet that you're placing. An example of confluence would be like back in 2022 and 2023 when the bottom was in for the market. If you recall, people didn't stop screaming for 12k Bitcoin until Bitcoin escaped right here at the end of October and into the first week of November. Otherwise, the infamous calls for 12k lasted for almost a year and a half. Now, none of this is to take shots at people who were calling for 12K. It's typical at the bottom that that's just emotionally what people do. It's the same thing at tops. People come extremely euphoric at tops. That's why we talk about emotional logs, tracking that, understanding your own emotions and saying, hey, when my indicator of myself feels like this, that's usually bottoms. <laughs> if I want to crawl into the corner of my closet and cry, <laughs> that's usually the bottom. If I start shopping for Lambos when I'm still 10x away from having that kind of money, I may be a little too excited and we may be at a local top. But back to this, what was confluence that we saw going on for the crypto market and for Bitcoin down here at the lows? Well, the first thing was, of course, we had identified that the market behavior that we had actually already been in a bear market right in here. When I put out a video about two weeks ago discussing all of that, we identified that our top came in when Coinbase IPO'd and that we had gone into the bear already from right here and done everything for capitulation and that we had already had our structure for a completed capitulation already to occur. And that was really kind of step one. The market peaks when Coinbase IPOs right here, most altcoins peak, and then we go into capitulation and we go the appropriate distance for capitulation to have already occurred. But going off of past cycles, there were other things that had already happened as well. I remember this happening in 2019. Here we are happening again in 2022, but it had actually occurred back in 2015 as well. You know, people scream in of death crosses happening. We had death crosses happen at each of the past prior bottoms. And by the time those things had actually occurred, we really were already at our bottom at that point. The only thing different here, FTX takes it one little notch lower. However, over here on the altcoin market, we actually held that low. And the true bottom of this market for the altcoin market is not FTX. It's right back there in the middle of June. Again, coming off these death crosses having already happened with our low already being in, death crosses happening with our low already being in, never to be taken out again. And still to this day, many of the majors still hold June as being the bottom of the market right there, like we have here for Ethereum or here for XRP and Binance coins, right? These are our majors. So seeing that we had already structurally played out what a final ending had looked like, that we're getting our death crosses and that we're already building bullish divergences here on the weekly timeframe as we have in 
the past, and as we had back here in 2015, these were confluence of events, proper structure, proper indicator behavior, and then strength starting to build in here as we have in the past. But even zooming out one leg further, Remember, like we said, really the 12K calls didn't stop until like October 30th, November 1st, November 2nd. We were already exhibiting what had happened with the stochastic RSI on the monthly time frame way before that. We were already acting exactly what it had looked like when we were pulling out of a bear. These were things we were going through in real time there in 2022 and 2023 to say, hey, look, these things are already acting like what they do when you pull out. We have behavior here from the relative strength index of what tops look like back in here. We see the fall off the cliff of the stochastic RSI from the peak of the market. By the time we started seeing things ramp up in here, that had indicated the bottom was already in. So all of 2023 with people saying, hey, we're going to 12K, it didn't make any sense because there was the confluence happening in here. I was saying, no, it's like we're acting like we're already coming off of the lows. So whether it was these things on bigger time frames or even these behaviors on medium time frames of the weekly time frame, there was a lot of things pointing to it to say, hey, look, this market's probably exhausted. It's acting like it has every time in the past. The majority of people are on the same side looking for lower. And not to mention all of 2021 was talking about the completion of a super cycle. What style correction would you be looking for after a completed super cycle? And that we had already gotten that type of finishing move to show up in here in the market. In addition to knowing what a bear market structure already looks like and that we had gone on to do that exact same thing and then boom, we had reached the full distance of what the completion would look like. So we had all these things happening here. It seems like we've reached our low. And so coming off of the lows, this was the confluence we were all experiencing in here as the market was starting to show strength underneath the hood when we had already done all of this here up until July and August and September. All of this had already made itself present, but people were still looking for $12,000. But all the confluence was there of saying, ah, it doesn't look like it. it doesn't look like 12K is going to happen. And we spent a lot of time on this talking about confluence at the bottom, but we're going to bring that all back to today as we discuss what's going on here in the market. And one of those really important things that I'm always looking for is I'm looking for, hey, can we find a bunch of things that make the confluence lopsided to be like, hey, look, like there's way too many things pointing that we're going this direction, not that direction, right? And that's the, these are the confluence events we saw at the low. We spent a long time talking about it and it took like a year for it to finally ramp its way back up, but the lows all held. But we were also seeing confluence of events occurring for the market right back in here. One of the things we talked about about getting back to the retracement level is that you would see retail behavior, right? You would see irrational exuberance, retail euphoria, extreme risk taking. All those things showed up and the extreme risk taking can easily be represented by meme coins, right? Meme coins going nuts. Remember how people just wouldn't buy Bitcoin at $17,000, $18,000, because they had to get down to $12,000 because emotionally they felt so much pain, they emotionally couldn't handle if it went down a little bit more. But when you reach this emotional phase of irrational exuberance, hey, it's already up 14,000% heck, I'll buy it. It's going to keep going up another 14,000%. That risk of downside of 25, 30%, it just, it gets brushed away because people don't have that feeling anymore. They're not worried about it. That's an emotional thing that happens when you get back to retracement levels. So we saw retail behavior happening in here while we were at a technical level, the 702 Fibonacci retracement. The other technical confluence that showed up in here is really precisely nailing that 4.236 extension based on 2018's bear. It finally goes up and, and nails it. Another thing we talked a lot about was addresses with greater than 10 Bitcoin and all the on-chain stuff. I won't go into all the on-chain things all over again because we've talked all about them, but just even the super simple one to see you know, these larger wallets taking profit into these moments happening in here, unlike what happens when you're shifting back to the all-time high in the past. Notice when this thing starts getting carried away, those wallets start taking profit and selling off. We notice them starting to go ahead and start to do that. And at the same time, we weren't seeing expansion happen in the market which we know has been a mandatory requirement for each of the past bull runs that expansion and breadth opens throughout the market. 
whether it was there in 2020 and 2021 or here in 2017 or here in 2013. For some reason, this element was missing of expansion in that the broader stock market only did a retrace to a 618 rather than expanding like we did in 2012, 2016, and 2020. And then the scary thing happened where gold broke out back here on March 1st, which is not the typical behavior that you actually have from gold when expansions are happening, risk taking is happening, and Bitcoin goes breaking off into a new high. But this has often been a precursor of troubling times happening for the stock market. And we expressed that these were some concerning things at the time, but they were confluence, right? Multiple things lining up at the same time. Retail euphoria, irrational exuberance, mocking of anybody being a bear or selling, Bitcoin at a 4.236 extension, the altcoin market at a 702 Fibonacci retracement with large entities selling and no expansion. And even when you look at it structurally on a smaller time frame to see how do you go back and hit the retrace, you can clearly see a five wave euphoric parabolic ending to get back to that retrace, just as Bitcoin did to get back to its retrace in 2019. And the structural behavior and size of Bitcoin ends up being nearly identical to that, along with the five wave ending of euphoria irrational exuberance, which is a retrace structure, even making pit stops at the same locations on its way up. So what did we see? We saw a bunch of confluences at the bottom that were flashing all the same signals that we've seen before when a bottom comes in. And then when we get up here, we see a lot of signals flashing that something's not right, mixed with the fact that retail investors finally became fully confident at that moment. But if you recall at the beginning of the video, I said that being here is what makes this so difficult or like being right here for XRP is what makes it so difficult because of when we're looking for confluence. When we just look at the time of how much Bitcoin has spent in here and the structure of what Bitcoin has done to get itself here, it has totally resembled what happens of a complete reset and then breaking out of these things on the exact same time frame. We talked about that in yesterday's video. We've talked about that many times in the past. And yet here we are, even following that time frame along, we still haven't hit the point in which expansion actually did start. We're sure getting awfully close to it, but even in here, the altcoins hadn't really done anything magnificent yet back in 2016 and 2017. And it was once that bottom kind of came in that we suddenly saw things like this start to happen throughout the market, but it took getting there for that to happen. So you have these things lining up here for things like Bitcoin from a time perspective, cycle behavior, right? You have these things lining up here for the altcoin market of like cycle behavior, where if we're using peaks here from like 2013 here in the blue, which is what all of this is, 2013, 14, 15, 16, 17, you know, you don't really break out and start expanding for the altcoin market until right here, which for us in our current time frame, that's like being like August 3rd or 4th. So we weren't even there yet. If we look at it from the perspective of like 2018, 19, 20, and 21 going on in there, just looking at these bottoms, right? And then, you know, we've got this morphed structure here, but having our peaks come down in here, then we go on into our capitulation. And like we've shown over there on the altcoin market, the bottom happening down here in June, where are you at, right? You're like right here at time where expansion really starts to kick in. Otherwise, this is just a retracement still happening over here in the altcoin market, still trying to get its shift on its way out and get into true expansion. So based on the bottom, you haven't gotten there yet, right? So it's not like we've passed the time yet from 2020 and 2021. And it's not like we've passed the time from 2014 through 2017. And while we've seen little corrections like this happen in the altcoin market where, you know, falls off and sets a new low, falls off and sets a new low, and then it recovers and it goes off in there, right? So from a time perspective, right, you're still not quite there of where expansion did happen for both 2013, but you're really kind of getting there for 2020. And we're just kind of entering into that window of time, right? So you look at it from this perspective of being like, all right, cycles, repetition, when do things end up happening? We're like entering into that window right now for the altcoin market in general for Bitcoin. And like we're talking over here on XRP topping on there on April 14th, 2021, 
that you're entering into that window where the market gets really spooked there on that last one and that concludes it and then you go off into expansion throughout the market right so like looking at it from this perspective you've got these confluences of being like timing is lining up from past cycles you're there We've gone through the trenches of trash for years on end, just as we have in past cycles, whether that's 2014 through 2016 or that's 2018 through 2020. You've gone through everything and you've now reached that time window of when expansion actually did take place. And what usually happens whenever you enter into that, you're going to finally enter into it with a little bit of fear as people are scared of it and wrong footed by it if it were to show up, which we're at the greatest fear of this market right now than we've been in in over a year. Then you look at Bitcoin like this and you say, man, can you do a structure like that, man? Can you go take out that low and do that and things still be OK throughout the market? I remember one time recently I got real startled by one. For those who have been longtime followers of the channel, you know, I'm a big precious metals guy, probably at the same level or more than crypto. But when gold did that, that was actually really startling for what happened with gold. It as well had gotten into a new all time high fell back, couldn't set another high, and then it goes on and sets a new low, and then it just recovers, right? And so getting into the new high, not able to set a new high, and then setting the new low, have we seen that before? And just other assets in general, because obviously that's not what Bitcoin did right here back in 2016 and 17, but can you do that back at the high and then try to get through? Yeah, I mean, it does happen, right? And like you saw with gold, then it just, it starts going, right? And well, we know we get through here, you're getting through a 4.236 extension, you're getting into expansion, you're gonna take the altcoin market with you. At least that's what happened all throughout here. This was the greatest alt season in the history of crypto was this one right here. Even 2013's alt season didn't have anything on what happened right here in 2017. This was kind of that same stuff Stuff that we saw there in 2021, right? Even here in XRP, it goes up 979%, right? I mean, that's kind of in line here of the things that we saw here for XRP back in 2021. It was really that 2017 expansion that was the big one for the whole market. We've gone into huge details on that. You know, on this leg right in here, the average returns of the top 10 were 70x versus, you know, the stuff at 12x. But right, moral of the story is, can you do that? Can you recover? I have a vivid memory <laughs> of when gold did that actually just recently, about two years ago. And so, you know, I started this by saying this element of all this happening right here is what makes it so difficult, right? You would say to yourself, oh, there's confluence, man. It's like time. It's time for everything to get soaring off into the sunset, right? But really, like once we get to here... This is really where kind of the confluence ends because then when you start looking at like the different elements, you get the opposite thing. You still have gold broken out, right? You still have the fact that this is acted exactly what happens with an ending that slams into a retracement. That's like the first wave down, you know, recovery can come in and then turn itself over. You don't have like what happened at the bottom back here in 2022 and 2023 where these wallets with 10 Bitcoins are like scooping it all up, buying it all up, right? They're not doing that here. And then we just can't get an expansion to show itself to be like, yes, we're going up or even to say, no, we're going down yet when it comes to the breadth over there in the US market. So it's not like those circumstances of where we have like all these things like super lining up all at the same time. We don't have all that confluence that's happening in the market. You've just got mixed pictures everywhere as we approach the time of which things could happen or the magical unicorn fairy dust to make itself present. And I know we have talked about it a lot and we just kind of keep harping on that over and over again, but it's because it really just seems like the most important thing is that if the breadth opens up over here, that's almost good enough. That's almost like all you really have to have for there to be like the confluence of everything because that does it all. Because if we actually started seeing the confluence open up right here, if we started seeing the breadth open up here in the US markets, and at the same time, we started seeing those things start to show up in there where gold starts to kind of fall back while risk on turns on, right? Gold is risk off, right? Breadth not opening up, only being magnif magnificent seven, right? That's risk off. That's consolidation. But if we saw breadth open up and people wanting to take bigger risks on growth and at the same time, people not feeling they have to run to gold and silver for safety because they're unsure and they're uncertain. Well, gold falling is what we've always had. 
in RTY or the Russell 2000 rising is what we've always had. And, you know, it could happen in a blink of an eye. You go back and you look at what happened back in 2017. The Russell just said, hey, guess what? In literally one week's time, risk on. And that's really all we need. Because if that happened, where suddenly it just became risk on, hey, we're done. We're pulling back here in gold. We're not trying to be safe. Guess what? Then the confluence is all completely there. We've approached time. We've approached structure. Can you do this and recover? You can. You can do that. But the super big element missing is the risk on aspect. And most of the time, if not every time, this comes right before. And that's where all the confluence arrives for these things. And so I'm sure you're tired of hearing, it's a complicated picture. It's like navigating uncharted waters because we've never been through this before. And it's because it's true. We just haven't. Those elements always become present. And like we've shown, even when we're like trying to find bottoms, like we did in 22 and 23, right? How they flashed all the exact same things that have happened when bottoms occurred back in 2018 and 19, and then back in 2014 and 15. We got all the same things to just flash, right? And so we're looking for that confluence and for those flashes to happen. From time, we're here. But there's certain things that are still missing and they're not present. And that's what makes it really difficult right now. Because you look at this and you say, it is time. <laughs> It is time to rumble, but all the confluence elements aren't there yet. And it's hard to know if they will show up. But if there's anything baked into the cake, it sure looks like we're right there at that time for something like that to be present. And really for like the next month or two, that's going to be our primary focus is to see can those confluences start to make themselves present throughout the market to give that. And it sure would be nice if it would just kind of like slowly show us that it's coming and forming and we can kind of be like, oh, okay, cool, it's coming, it's coming. But most of the time, it just kind of suddenly shows up and gets out. And it just kind of shows up in a blink of an eye, not giving you really any time to sit there and say, I think it might be happening. Uh, it just kind of happens. And right now, we don't know if it will. But if it does... I would suspect this is the moment we've all been waiting for. This is the moment you put all the years of hard work into. But right now, outside of this, outside of being like, it's time, it's time, or at least in the next month or two, it's time, we still need a lot of the confluence to show up. And so as we go through the coming weeks, that's going to be the things that we look for and try to point out. Are they starting to make themselves present? Because I can tell you, this is a lot of opium right here. They're looking at this thing, looking at this thing. It's a lot of opium. And it's not intended to just be blatant opium. It's going to go up for the sake of it's going up. We try to point the picture and say, well, look, these were all the other things that were happening at that time. I could just come on here and make this video and say, see, it's time, it's time to go. But we know there's other things that actually do matter. And that is breath opening up, gold falling back risk on, all that kind of stuff, right? I see this stuff, it makes me excited, but only to the extent of where all historical precedent set for these types of events also requires these other things to occur. And right now we don't have the confluence of those, and that's what we're really focusing on, is the moral of the story. But I do sincerely believe the next two months are going to paint a long-term picture of not only crypto, but of the U.S. stock market as well. And I think we have entered into this period of two months right here where the next several years of our lives are going to be determined. And I don't think there has ever been a more intense time in my experience of being in markets than where we actually are right now. That the deciding point of our future is all actually within this two month window and not just crypto, but broader markets as well. And it makes it such an intense time on whether or not we're gonna follow something where the breadth turns to absolute trash in a moment like this, like in 2007, which is what this is, and how we're behaving here in 2024 is rivaling that. Will this be our warning sign or will this be the biggest breadth opening in the history of the universe? to distribute that throughout everything else. We seem to be living in that moment where that decision is gonna happen here. Whether we look at it from the perspective of crypto of being a month or a month and a half, or the perspective of the stock market the next month, month and a half. That answer seems to be like now, and that's what makes this current time so insanely intense. And so, like mentioned, right? If we get the confluence of where something like the Russell starts to move its way up, or like I talked about in the Bitcoin video, some of those early signs have actually been altcoins leading the way for Bitcoin is giving that heads up of things to come. Still, I think it would be with the RTY actually leading the way or the Russell 2000. But either way, if events like this started to 
happen periodically throughout the market that would be that sign but moral of the story is there's some things that look very similar there's some things that just don't when we found the bottom of the market back in 22 and 23 we had all the confluence that it just showed you when we got back to the retracement there was a confluence of multitudes right gold breaking out russell 2000 not while it's greater than 10 distributing with a rational exuberance right those were all things happening at the same time and we now enter this moment right here of time of where this is where the fireworks went off. This is where everything went off and looking for, is there the confluence saying that that's what's going to happen, that the fireworks are going to go off because everything has lined up for that to occur. And the thing that is just missing is all the confluences that you would hope to see at the same time. And so for the next month or two, it is totally about saying, where are the confluences? Can we get some similarities to start, to start showing themselves up? So we'll track it every day and see how it goes. So, all right, that's it for this one, guys. I'll catch you in markets in the morning tomorrow. Otherwise, in the meantime, if you're looking for something to do, of course, you could check out the newsletter over here on blockchainbacker.substack.com. We dive into a lot of the indicators of breadth in this most recent one, really showing you how when that opening up happens, it really does translate into crypto, especially back there in October, November, and December that we saw it actually happening a lot there in the stock market, identically with crypto and how truly important that actually is. It was a 28 minute audio recording that I personally voice recorded myself for this. I voice record all the newsletters. There's almost 40 of them, I think, in there. You can go back and check all the research that's been done on altcoins when it comes to developer activity, user activity levels, and inflation metrics. But this is available over here on blockchainbacker.substack.com. If you like videos, of course, you could check out bcbacker.com, where there's over 40 videos and 11 hours of content teaching you how to set up your own charts and indicators within TradingView and CoinTrader Pro. There are links in the description of this video to bcbacker.com and to the newsletter over there at blockchainbacker.substack.com. Otherwise, I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Tomorrow, and I want to thank you so much for watching. If you could, please like this video and give it a thumbs up. If you are new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified of when I create new content and when I go live. As always, this is not investment advice and I am not a financial advisor, but if you ever need to pick me up or a little bit of reassurance, just remember that the blockchain backers got your back. Have a good one.